All right, what's going on, everybody? Today we have a special topic, and that is status effects. You may have seen it on my Twitter, and I say that jokingly because, of course, you haven't seen it on my Twitter. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, you are in the majority, and that is more than understandable. Because to be honest, I don't even understand Twitter and haven't gotten it to work. But with that said, I definitely want to give a special shout out to my one and only follower, Vasant. And actually, Vasant, go ahead and follow him. Don't worry about me. I'll figure out what I'll do with Twitter later on. But anyway, I posted this for him because he was a follower. And I was like, well, I got to put something on Twitter. And that was status effects. And now they're a little different than how status effects are treated, especially in PSO2, where essentially you have a chance to inflict the status. As it looks, Genesis, is that status is actually a threshold. And so what do I mean by that? I mean is that in order to freeze something, it has a number of units that it needs to hit before, let's say, it's frozen. So what we're going to do is we're going to test that against Bujin. But now there's a couple of rules, especially when it comes to Tector, that I want to convey that you'll also see on the screen. Photonic explosions, those are the wand explosions when you hit something with the wand. They generate one unit. Wave Smash, the photon art, generates two. A two-hit combo. When we look at Uncharged Text or Talus, two units for every attack. And then for charge attacks, four units. So you can imagine Bujin, I believe people have been saying that Bujin, at least on its initial freeze, is about 44 units. So what we're going to do is we are going to go against Bujin with this Talus, and we are going to hit him 22 times. Now, I will call out, we are using this Talus, a debuff rate of 20% plus. So I'm expecting to freeze Bujin within 22 hits of an uncharged or talus tech shot, which should give us 44. I'm hedging my bets that this 20% is going to lower that threshold. And so 10% of 44 is 4.4. So 20% would be 8.8. .8. So if we round it up to nine, it should take 16, 16 to 17 shots to freeze Bujin. So let's get started. And there we have it. Both the Talus tech and regular uncharged techs cause two. And so that was about what, 17, 18 hits? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my crass Talus. And what we'll do next is see if I have to do that now 22 shots. I now have my crass Talus equipped. I no longer have that 20% debuff passive or bonus from the Liberate. Now when I now cast these techniques, it should take 22 shots for me to freeze Bujin. And so I did two runs. What we noticed was, if you saw the count on each run, I was within 22 hits of the Talus Ice attacks. And so if we use our units, Talus and Uncharged Text are two units. Those 22 hits hit the threshold of 44 units. This is how status effects work, more or less, in NGS. Now, enemies will have different thresholds. So while Bujin has 44 units worth of ice, a Wallon or Dragon, they might have different thresholds for fire. And now, of course, and I won't get into the specifics because I don't have all of the data, different techs also do different types of hits. So let's say an uncharged foyer versus an uncharged Guy foyer. There might be a difference of like one does 1.5 or two hits and the other one does three. So they're not necessarily scaled to where every uncharged tech is only gonna do two units. They can vary. But what this does show is, is that status effects can be controlled. They can be systematically enabled. And this gets into a lot of important things when we start thinking about Tector, for instance, looking at wand element revoke. This is where things get fun to where we're really gonna start breaking down mathematically what are the thresholds for an enemy. 
And how do I manipulate that? This is where one element gets very, very powerful because detector, you can control whether or not you do an element attack or if you do a physical attack. That skill being wand element revoked. One of the working theories I had about wand element revoke was that yes, you wanted to control the status effect. And essentially what we're seeing here aligns with my working theory of why this skill is there, why it stands out so much, but why it might be important. So you might've seen in one of my older videos when I was fighting against Nogalith, I had frozen him. The issue was, was that when he was frozen, he still had his head armor. Frozen when I could no longer do max damage because I was not hitting the weak point. Taking this knowledge and understanding this and then starting to keep track of when an enemy is going to be frozen based on that threshold, I need to remove the element of my wand because if I do this, I'm going to trigger a freeze at the less optimal situation. So I'm going to turn that off. And then once I get into that optimal situation, I will then reapply it. So you can imagine in Bujin, I'm keeping a count in my head. One unit of ice is one wand strike. So I've hit him 30 times. And let's say that, oh, he hasn't shown his weak spot, even though Bujin technically doesn't have a weak spot. I'm going to now revoke the element and beat on him with my physical attacks because in another... 12 13 14 attacks i know he's going to be frozen all of a sudden he exposes his weak point now i recharge my wand with ice and i begin to beat on him for those additional 12 13 14 hits now he's frozen i know he's going to be frozen i can now have this strategy in my head to do optimal damage this is going to be very very interesting because of how especially for tector we play off of when should i do physical attack when should I do elemental attacks? Because for instance, this is going to work the same for physical. There is likely a physical threshold. And what I wanna do is I wanna draw your attention to shift to amplify. What it says is that it increases your down accumulation rate by 5% for both elemental and for physical. So to keep the math simple, imagine that Bujin or another boss or whatever, they have a threshold to be frozen of 100. It requires 100 units of ice to freeze them. Or it requires 100 units of ice, or excuse me, 100 units of physical attacks to down them, to stun them. What this skill does is says, hey, instead of it requiring 100 units, you now need 95. So while this 5% at first didn't seem so great, now when you start thinking about it, it actually has a lot of advantages. And you can play around with this. One of the other things that I can't confirm 100%, but it's likely true, is that once you have hit a boss or hit an enemy with a status effect, when they recover, they now gain resistance. And I believe, if, my, if the data is correct from what I'm hearing, that resistance is 50%. So you can imagine, Bujin has a threshold of 44, and my wand strikes will do one. The minute I freeze Bujin, and he comes back, he now has ice resistance. And so instead of my attacks doing one, my attacks, my, my wand attacks that being, now do 0.5. This is also why managing your wand is going to be important because if you freeze Bujin or any enemy at the inopportune time, let's say when their weak point is not exposed, to then freeze them again is going to take more effort. And so you have to be like, do I want to freeze them now or do I want to wait? can be the same thing for force or even talus do i want to use the element that they're weak against now or should i be fighting them with let's say foyer because i know foyer is not going to trigger the freeze and once i get him into a position where i want to freeze him that's when i change my attacks this is also going to be interesting protector when you do freeze an enemy because now he's frozen do you continue to stack your freeze charges or do you revoke the element and you now build your physical state and vice versa? If I've downed him with a physical attack, is this now where I change the element? These are going to be some of the games that the tech classes want to play, but also the, the physical classes. So especially for someone like me who's multi-weaponing, I don't necessarily have to revoke wand to get the physical because I could just go with partisan. But I can play back and forth and say, okay, what was the first thing that happened? Did I freeze them or did I stun them? We'll say stun is the physical. Okay, now I want to freeze them. I want to focus on that, or do I? Or do I want to continue to build those physical stacks? Even though I know he's 
the boss is going to have physical resistance. It's going to take me twice as much effort to down him again. Do I want to continue to do that because that boss is not in a weakened state where his weak point is exposed to where I can then freeze him? We know for sure that bosses can be down both physically and elementally, but we've seen that the elemental downs last longer. So this becomes another potential strategy that you want to think about. When do you want to freeze? Do you want to freeze early? Do you care? Do you want to hold back? And so there's a lot more to explore in this, but I wanted to cover it just because this changes a lot of things, not only for Tector, but for other classes, especially as the game progresses, being very, very thoughtful of when you want to use those elements, that position that you're putting yourselves in. So you make sure that when you down them, you can take advantage as much as possible. So I just wanted to share that. I know this is going to be a lot, probably a lot of comments, a lot of questions. And of course, bring it on. This is important stuff. When I learn more, I will come back. But really wanted to get that out there to really understand how status effects work, how you can manipulate it, and more of the power that classes like Tector have. But you're going to have to be thoughtful about it. And you're really going to start needing to take notes. I know this is a game but for some of you. You're like, oh, I got to take notes. But if you're maining Tector and you really want to push it, like I do from time to time, these are the things that you're going to want to start developing and learning so that when you run into a boss, you're like, okay, that's 50 units of fire. Okay, that's 60 units of ice. But I don't want that 60 units of ice until I see that yellow spot on his forehead. So hopefully it was informative. Hope this was helpful. And for many of you, definitely probably a lot to chew on. I know you're going to go in and start experimenting. You know, go find all the bosses, go burn them down, go freeze them, go shock them. Come back and let me know what you find. Once again, till next time.